I'm really honored to be here today. Thank you so much for inviting me. I have, in all my years of working in marketing and communications, I've presented to all sorts of different groups, done probably hundreds of presentations, but I've never been asked to talk about my volunteering. And I've been volunteering for 40 years. So I'm really excited to share with you um, just how much I love volunteering, the joy that it's brought me, and um, how much how much it's enhanced my career options as well, which is I know what you're interested in today. So I do have to talk about myself a bit, but I promise I'll uh, I'll bring it back to you. Um, I, do, I have a Bachelor of uh, Arts Honours in English Literature and a Master of Arts in Creative Writing. As you can imagine, a degree in Creative Writing doesn't exactly line you up for a lot of jobs. It's a wonderful thing, but um, it, it doesn't say here's your next job. So this is where I had to be creative and this is where my volunteer work came in. My volunteer work absolutely allowed me to start a career and it also allowed me to change careers. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Thanks to my volunteer work, I have had a 20 year career in marketing and communications in a whole bunch of different sectors, uh, healthcare, IT, not-for-profit sector. So it's not so much where I've had the uh, jobs, it's the fact that I've had that skills and experience and that's the key right the skills and experience from the volunteer work that i've done so right now i'm the communications and a fund development manager at ywca durham we're in oshawa and we provide housing and counseling services to women and children who've experienced domestic violence and in my volunteer work so that's my career but in my volunteer work and my personal time. I'm the president of the Durham chapter of Cystic Fibrosis Canada. And this is an organization that uh, works to raise awareness and funds to find a cure for this disease, cystic fibrosis. CF is a lung disease. I have CF. And because I'm healthy and able to volunteer, I've been doing so. So I'm a perfect example of one of the places that people might volunteer, where and why they volunteer, a personal cause, something that has impacted um, your own life. So we're going to talk about that later, of course. Maybe there's a personal issue you have that you would like to help out with. So what I want to really share with you today is how much, how completely and utterly enjoyable volunteering can be and how it can enrich your life and lead you to great things. So if you don't mind, we'll go to the next slide. Thank you. This is what we're going to discuss today. I'm going to talk about my experience and how volunteering helped me start and grow a career. You've probably heard this, the saying or thought about it yourself that I can't get the experience I need for a job without getting the job first. And volunteering can certainly help you get that skills and experience. I'll talk about why people volunteer in general and what we know about that. We'll discuss how to get started as a volunteer and what to know about the, the scene in Canada. We'll talk about the process. Um, I'll give you some tips for volunteering success based on my experience. And of course, we'll have questions and answers. I wanna mention first before I go on that um, I recognize that we all have our own pressures and our lives stresses in our lives and then I'm not everyone has time to volunteer so I'm not here to make you feel bad if you can't volunteer and I'm just here to let you know that it is a wonderful and fun thing it can lead you uh, to lifelong friends and networks and of course uh, grow your career so next slide please that's me <laughs> um, that's me I was really honored last year to receive a national award for volunteering from Cystic Fibrosis Canada. So I just had to share that picture. Anyway, it was the biggest honor of my life. But I have been volunteering since I was 10 years old. So that's 40, 40 years. My first volunteer role was to coach. I was, I was 10 and I was coaching younger children uh, to get excited about school and learning. I remember the program was called I Am Able. That's pretty much all I remember from that long ago. And it was a, a bit ambitious because I was already young. What were we doing volunteering with younger kids? But we did it and it was fun. And then through the years in grade school, I volunteered uh, for projects like painting the mural on the back of the stage for graduation 
in high school, I was a peer tutor, helping students who were struggling a bit with reading and writing, working one-on-one -on -one with them. Off to university I went, I found myself organizing events for the off residence social committee, so social events that brought students together who didn't live in the university. I volunteered as a reader for audible textbooks for the blind. After university, I continued to volunteer. I brought my dog to nursing homes to visit seniors. I volunteered as an ESL instructor at the local immigrant and refugee center, where I also began to write articles about issues in the community. And then in my 20s, I began to be very comfortable and embrace the fact that I had a lung disease and I wanted to help to raise funds and find a cure. So I began to speak about my uh, cystic fibrosis and I began volunteering with the chapter. I started writing articles for the newsletter. Maybe you're getting a pattern here. <laughs> I became editor of that newsletter. I eventually uh, uh, then became editor of the national newsletter. All the while, I'm still volunteering with the local chapter. And, and the things I was doing there were speaking with the media, uh, organizing fundraising events, coming up with communication plans, speaking to groups, all of this while leading a group of volunteers as well as the president. So all of this was developing my skills and experience. But guess what? The whole time I'm doing this, my paid work was completely different because of course we have to pay the bills and I was working as a secretary. This wasn't my, my career goal. My career goal was to work in marketing, to work for an advertising agency. So, but here's the thing I didn't realize while I was doing all this, that I was growing those skills and experience. The tutoring and the mentoring that I did, even as a child, allowed me to become a better speaker. So there's a skill. The social committee organizing that I did to, to plan events helped me grow my event planning skills, right? Whether I was organizing a walk or a golf tournament or a bake sale, that was me growing those skills. The textbook reading, taught me to enunciate, to be a better speaker. The visit to senior homes taught me a lot of patience, to live in the moment, to sit still, good life skills. And obviously all the communication work I was doing was helping me enter that field. And I'm gonna talk about that in detail later. So let's go to the next slide. And I do have a question for everybody now to use the chat feature. <clears throat> if you feel comfortable and you don't have to answer, um, Let's take a second and, and could you share with me, if you volunteer already, where do you volunteer? And what are the, some of the things that you're doing as a volunteer? We'll just see if we get any answers in there. Do we have any volunteers out there? Okay. That's okay. Oh, right. So we have someone who's volunteered at the Suicide Prevention Hotline. And here we have a treasurer. Amazing. That's great. Um, accounting, accounting skills growth, right? Yes, before COVID. We are going to talk a bit about that. I should have said at the very beginning, that I really am talking about before and after COVID, but there, we'll talk a little bit about virtual volunteering. Interpreter with Refugee Center, or yeah, I mean, exactly. So I'm guessing from, from some of these that these are very, um, as is very common, uh, personal issues, things that are near and dear to your heart. Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow, <laughs> so impressive. Yeah, so personal issues, passions, amazing. Thank you for sharing all those. Um, I'll just talk a bit about uh, what we know from Volunteer Canada, and that's a great resource that I'll type in the chat later, Volunteer Canada organization. So these are kind of old stats, but I, I would guess that they're, everything's a bit down right now with COVID. But in 2013, Canadians volunteered an average of 154 hours per year. And in 2018, that number went up to 206 hours per year. So the annual volunteer commitment equaled two and a half million full-time jobs across the country. Can you imagine? Volunteers really do build this country. 
Uh, and people volunteer with a few things in mind. And, and some of these will probably sound very familiar to many of you if you've ever even thought about volunteering. We volunteer because we want to contribute to our community. We want to acquire new skills. We want to gain job experience. We want to make friends, expand our network. We want to advance a cause or a passion. And in immigrant populations, volunteers indicated they wanted to volunteer in order to improve English speaking skills, to gain a better understanding of the Canadian workplace, and to fulfill religious obligations. So overall, 93% of volunteers want to help a cause that they believe in, and 67% of volunteers help with a cause that personally impacts them. Now, those of you who volunteer and those of you who, who've thought about it probably know some of the benefits, but um, one is that we have increased interpersonal skills. So imagine when you're volunteering, even if you're a volunteer who's in the background a bit, you're still interacting with uh, members of that agency and often you're interacting with a ton of people in the public or a team that you're working with. We also, another benefit is communication skills, obviously, again, the interactions, or maybe you're a speaker for an organization, substantive knowledge. So even someone like me who has a cystic fibrosis, I learned so much when I began volunteering that I didn't know about, so much about the science, the, the way fundraising works, so you, you get a deeper understanding or even just your first understanding of an issue. You learn managerial skills, especially if you're leading a team for an event or you're part of a committee. And of course, you acquire new skills. And we're going to talk about that. You definitely want to keep track of those skills. And another benefit is helping the chances of securing a job or obtaining a job. So I have another question for you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, even if you don't volunteer, what are some of the passions or causes or issues that personally impact your life that you've considered volunteering for? You've thought about it, haven't quite acted on it yet. I'm just curious if you're comfortable answering. While you're thinking about that, um, whatever that issue is or that political issue or personal issue, right, yes, sorry, help and be useful to a specific society, absolutely. Um, there's different types of volunteering that you can do for whatever that issue or, or thing is that you're passionate about. There's an agency or organization somewhere out there or you could start one. Um, but the most co common ways to volunteer are event organizing and fundraising. Because as you know, most charities um, need to fundraise. Teaching computer skills right on. Oh my goodness, that is a great one. Alleviating, ugh, alleviating poverty and fighting against hunger and volunteer teaching children's moral education. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking of the computer skills um, I did a stint as well as uh, volunteering with the library to help seniors get on the internet. So there's a perfect example of how you could develop that. Thank you for those answers. So event organization and uh, fundraising is, is a really common thing that people do as volunteers. Sitting on a committee or a board as well. Teaching, coaching, and mentoring. I mean, think about all the, the sports coaching out there that's mostly volunteer. Collecting, serving, or delivering food. Think about the food banks, shelters that serve meals. We have an organization here called Meals on Wheels that delivers food to people who can't leave their homes. So that's a huge one. And providing advice or counseling services. You, um, typically, you'll see social workers doing work like that. Uh, there's even lawyers who will donate their legal time for people experiencing domestic violence and navigating the court system. So next slide, please. Sorry, it's about me again. Um, I just want to share with you exactly how I used volunteering to start a new career. So way back when I was working as a secretary, 
uh, and wanting to work for a, a marketing agency and doing all that creative writing and taglines, they called them, and, and being what's called a copywriter. So writing ads, um, brochures, whatever you can think of. I had zero experience doing that, I, but I had to pay the bills. So off I went to work. And that's when I started to volunteer with the Immigrant Center and writing articles for their newsletter. At the same time, this is when I was embracing my CF and becoming comfortable sharing that I had the disease. And I started writing articles for that newsletter, for the CF newsletter. I enrolled in the Public Relations Certificate program. And so while I was studying, I offered to create a communication plan for the CF chapter. And I helped them come up uh, with a strategy for increasing awareness about the disease and the chapter. I wrote a radio ad that would be used by a radio station to promote a fundraiser that they were holding. And all of this was done as a volunteer. One of the single best things I ever did back then was I uh, asked an advertise, advertising agency owner to have lunch. I treated this person to lunch, no strings attached, wasn't looking for a job. I, I called it an informational interview and I asked what I needed to do to start my career and he took he gave me some great advice which I took and ran with which was build your portfolio so based on all that writing that I had done the newsletter articles the personal essays the radio ad copy the communication plan I now had something substantial in my portfolio. It wasn't empty and it didn't matter that it wasn't paid work. It was work that spoke for itself and it was work that that showed I had skills and experience. And isn't that what it's all about? So that portfolio got me my first job as a copywriter in an ad agency. And then it was just the jumping off point for this long career that I've had. Started as a copywriter, then worked as a marketing coordinator at a software company, then a marketing manager, marketing and volunteer manager. So a progression that you can see and that you can see started because of my volunteer work. Something that you can do too. So how do you get started? Let's go to the next slide. Now, yes, everything I'm talking about is, um, I guess, pre-COVID and with the assumption we will live in a post-COVID world and return to somewhat normal. While I'm listing um, the things that I'm going to talk about, think about your own life. Think about um, all the potential places that you can develop your skills and experience. And think about where, where your friends and family are involved as well. So here's where people typically volunteer. Culture, sports, and recreation organizations. Education and research. Health. Social services law adv advocacy and politics, religion, development and housing. So again, things that you're passionate about. Where do you go on a daily basis? What are your friends doing with their spare time? Maybe spend time with an organization that they like to help. Perhaps you go to a place of worship. Maybe they need help at special dinners or during services. Think of your hobbies. Do you go to a recreation center? Maybe they need help in a recreation program. Is there a health issue that has impacted you or your family? Maybe you can volunteer to help raise funds. Pay attention to what's in your neighborhood as you walk around. Maybe there's an immigrant center or a shelter or a food bank. If you're working, find out if the company that you're working for supports a particular charity. That's very common. Maybe you can help there. Is there a social issue justice that gets you worked up? Maybe you can volunteer for an agency that works to affect change. Do you identify strongly with a political party? Volunteer for them. Or maybe you've been to an event that you love, a fundraising event. Maybe you can just volunteer, help out at that event. And how about where you go to school? Is there a student association that they have? And the United Way, uh, they're all over Canada. And they have a list typically of their eight member agencies of YWCA Durham is one of them. That's a good place to look as well, any United Way website. Now, sometimes you don't have to pick the organization first. Maybe you pick the role that you're more comfortable with. I've known in my lifetime many volunteers who, contrary to what I said about, you know, it's a personal passion, they're just there because they found the group, they found the role that they love. And that's good too.
So there's all types of uh, roles. We need all types of people to volunteer. If you're more of a quiet person, don't think that you have to go and do presentations or talk to a ton of people every day. Perhaps you prefer to do tasks and have your head down in, in the back room. That's okay too. Like think of the accounting volunteering or um, planning, writing, all sorts of things you can do quietly. But if you're more of the person who wants to be out and about, um, willing to put yourself out there, maybe you're going to help them find sponsors for their events. You're not afraid to ask, will you help us? That's a good practice for sales because there is some rejection there. So if you're, if you're okay with that, that's a great practice for that skill. If you like to be part of a team, but not a leader, there's always a committee looking for you. You don't have to lead, you just have to be part of that team. If you'd ha rather help with different things um, and different agencies, there's always a one-off event or project. When, whenever there's any type of fundraiser, if you think of a walk or a run, so many volunteers involved, front desk, you know, people standing along the route, people handing out water, whatever it is, there's always something that you can do. And they call it now micro-volunteering. Um, it's very trendy these days because we're all so busy. And that means you have a really quick, uh, short time commitment, quick projects, and you're working on your own, maybe an hour or two at that event. So um, in chat again, I'm going to ask you to think of the skills that you need to get the job that you've always wanted and how you can develop those skills. So what are some of the, the careers that you're considering, dreaming about if there were no barriers and you could just make this happen? What are those careers? I'm just interested to know and, and to think about maybe where you could volunteer. So go ahead and chat. Recreational therapy with seniors. Oh, okay, so I, right. And I don't know a lot about that sector, but I'm guessing the question is uh, where, uh, if you, what's your dream career? That's, that's the question. If you have no barriers to getting there, what would you love to be doing for your career? And then I wanna tie it into where you might volunteer. So recreational therapy with seniors, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you, you could reach out to senior centers. There's senior centers all over uh, the country um, or the recreation um, centers. There's probably an agency that oversees recreational therapy that you would know more about, a professional agency. Finance, treasure, there you go, right? That's the perfect fit. Information technology, oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many agencies need help with that. Anything that you're passionate about there's an agency that probably needs help, even if it's just upgrading a website or looking at ways to um, reach out to people through technology. Um, when I think of my own job, I mean, I'm not an expert in everything and I, you know, I need to know social media, I need to know email um, marketing and, and I need help with those things. Oh my goodness, look at these flying in, awesome. Share my knowledge in cybersecurity. Wow, yeah. So agencies certainly have a lot of risk assessments that they do, worrying about risk. That would be so helpful, if, even if you held a session probably for um, volunteer agencies. My career goal, estate planning or legal liability insurance. Art history, wow. Again, I see for the legal stuff, um, insurance and state planning, absolutely maybe looking to some insurance agencies. Um, gosh, I'd have to think more about that one. I know that um, the legal, there are legal organizations that, that, as I said earlier, volunteer their time. There must be some kind of a insurance oversight agency that might need your help that's independent, you know? And that's a good point um, about 
developing other skill sets. That is such an important point because, yeah, it doesn't all always have to be about what you're doing. It could just be, well, I want to develop this one particular skill because I'm feeling like I need help with that and just dive in. Yeah. Oh, goodness, the foreign doctor. Yeah, that's, that's, I can imagine that's a tough one. I'm sorry, I don't know offhand. But I can give that some thought. Thank you for all the answers. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. I just want to double check it. Okay. All right. So some examples, I don't know if these touch any of your, your hearts, but a teacher, right? You want to be a teacher, look for coaching opportunities, tutoring. Uh, some of you may have heard of an organization called Big Brother, uh, Big Sister. Uh, that's where you mentor uh, a younger child, uh, just in life, nothing specific. And you spend time with that person. So that's a great one for potential teachers. If you're interested in marketing or graphic design agencies, pretty much any agency needs help with ads and websites and flyers and social media. Most of them don't have budgets for that. Very few do. If you're into more of uh, working with your hands like carpentry, uh, there's an organization called Habitat for Humanity. They build houses. You can help out building a house. You can help um, even YWCA Durham. We often ask for one vo one time volunteers to help build a shed or whatever project we need done. If you're a gardener, many places need help with their grounds because they don't have money to have a groundskeeper. Habitat, one of my favorites. Yeah, they're amazing. Social work, maybe you're thinking of getting into social work. Uh, shelters always need help. Uh, sexual assault crisis lines do train volunteers and we'll talk about training a bit too. You don't have to know exactly what you're doing when you start. Uh, accounting, I think I've mentioned it a few times, most uh, volunteer committees need a treasurer. A board member, you know, shoot high, why not? Uh, do you live in a condo? Maybe your condo building has a condo association or a homeowner association. Now, of course, with this pandemic, <laughs> There are some challenges, but virtual volunteering is increasing as well. Volunteer Canada has, has acknowledged that. And so how do you volunteer virtually right now? Well, uh, social media strategy development. Again, most agencies don't have the luxury of, of having a social media expert. So maybe you can help them do that. A technology assessment, the person in IT, maybe you can work with um, the agency over Zoom to uh, evaluate their technology needs. An employee handbook uh, development. Maybe you're in, look, thinking of HR or you're a writer. You can help them write something, write a, a policy and procedure manual. Photography, that's a great way to volunteer. Uh, a lot of agencies can't afford to pay for stock photography, so maybe you can get them some pictures that they need. You can help develop a business or marketing plan for an agency. You can help uh, write a project proposal or a grant. Uh, application. You can do financial analysis, any sort of graphic design. You can help with translating, editing, proofreading. That's all can be done virtually. Mentoring or teaching still can be done virtually and telephone assistance for seniors. Um, well, seniors that just need help making calls, planning things, don't want it, or maybe they need help going on a website uh, to book something. Lots of things you can do virtually. So let's go to the next slide. And this is, I guess, an overview of the process of volunteering in Canada. And again, this can be different for different agencies. It can be less formal, more formal, but it really is a lot like applying for a job, frankly. So um, before you start, you'll want to research the organization that you're thinking of, of reaching out to. Maybe meet with someone um, on the phone or on Zoom. Talk to the leader, talk to, about, talk to them about what you're interested in. Send them an email or a letter, uh, attach your resume. Maybe you have a reference letter hanging around. Now it's been a long time since I've applied for a job. So if I sound out of date, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, maybe you do have reference letters. So they, they will probably interview you or at least talk to you and ask you lots of questions, find out what you would like to do and find out more about you. 
they may actually have job descriptions, position descriptions about what it is that they would like you to do. So they'll send that to you. Many, if not most organizations now require um, a vulnerable sector or criminal reference check done through uh, the local police. It is taking many weeks, at least in Durham now, it's taking like seven weeks to get one. So just a heads up. And typically the agency will pay for this. This should not cost you anything. Um, many organizations then, let's say you're, it's a good fit and you decide we're gonna, we're gonna volunteer. They will, will may have courses for you to take virtually online uh, about their policies and procedures. They may have diversity and, and inclusion policies, anti-bullying. Um, so you'll probably have to take a couple of courses that take maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And then they should have some specific training uh, and meetings to attend virtually or however to train you. For example, as I mentioned earlier, the Sexual Assault Center is not going to have you answering the phone without training. Uh, years ago, I did volunteer with a group called Project Literacy, and it was to help people who had difficulty reading. And we went through, uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was like, gosh, 16 hours of training, like two days of full-on training on all the issues and 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 how to interact with people. And that was so important because I wasn't an expert on that topic. I felt insecure about it. So this helps you learn, helps you prep, be ready. Now, if an agency doesn't have those kind of resources, they should at least give you a, you know, a heads up about what it's what you're doing and how it's going to look and feel. And a good organization, once you're there and you're and you're doing stuff with them, should ask you how you're doing and reach out to you and want you to honestly tell them how you're feeling. Maybe uh, the role isn't right for you. Maybe the agency isn't right for you. That's okay. But maybe you can try something else with that agency. So it's, it's okay to uh, say, you know what, this isn't working. Let's try something different. All right. So let's go to the next slide. And these are just some tips that I have that I've noticed over the years. I'll tell you one more story about me and that's it. So earlier I, I talked about starting a career because of volunteering, but you can also change your career. As someone mentioned in the chat, just developing new skills, totally different skills. So when I moved um, from up north to down here, my career took a turn because I couldn't find a job right away in my career. So I worked at a bank and I worked there for five years, the whole time. So I was working in a bank, had nothing to do with marketing and public relations. And so for those five years, I had a gap in my employment um, based on that career. But the whole time I was volunteering. So I was still working with CF chapter, giving speeches, organizing events, leading committees, sitting on boards. So when the YWCA Durham job came up, you bet I applied because I wanted I wanted to go back to it. I just missed it. People change careers, right? And then they go back sometimes. So how did I convey that I still had those skills, even though my resume said bank? <laughs> um, I stated it. It's, I mean, it's that simple. Don't be afraid to have that volunteer experience section on your resume. And don't be afraid to state the skills that you have because of your volunteer work. Always state it proudly and confidently and never never use that phrase, oh, it's just volunteer work, or it's just a, a volunteer job. It is a skill or and experience that you've accumulated. So in order to do that, you have to keep track of these things. Um, constantly take inventory of your skills, skills that you're learning and developing. I've, when I was preparing this presentation, I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten so many things, right? And you will forget them. So Maybe keep a little journal every night or wherever whatever you do, put it in your phone. Just think, well, today I, I worked at the registration desk, so here are some skills that I learned as a volunteer. Think hard about what the skills are, what you've developed, uh, what roles you've played, and list them. As a volunteer, try to treat every moment as a career moment as well, if that's where you're, what you're doing. I mean, you don't have to do that, but if you're thinking of a career, Think of it as, as everything you're doing as a career moment. Know that whoever you're talking to at any given moment, whether it's the public or someone on your committee, 
this may be a person who is um, in the industry or in a role that you uh, want, right? Like you just don't know and, and you can ask them. That's another thing, just ask them. Keep your commitments. Um, again, this is all going towards who you are as a person. Yes, we get sick or stuff happens, but if you think you're not gonna, going to really show up for something, don't say yes. It's okay to say no if you know you're not going to show up. But if you say yes, show up because this will be your reputation, right? And use those people that know you in your volunteer world as re referees. I've definitely got um, at least three that I hand out all the time if I'm looking for work because they know you, they know that you're committed, they know that you're capable, they know your skills and your attitudes. So don't be afraid to ask them to, to be a reference for you. And, oh, you don't have to have a personal connection as I mentioned earlier, but keep the, keep the skills list and continue on with the skills and experience that you need. All right, and then we'll go to our last slide. I'm going to get to the questions, but I just wanted to, if you're thinking of starting, um, I'm just going to give you the link in the chat to Volunteer Canada. Um, there's great resources in there, articles about starting a career in volunteering, where to volunteer, how to get started, statistics, interesting notes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, United Way is a good, wherever you are, United Way is a great resource to look for agencies that you might consider volunteering for. A city or a town uh, where you live or the municipality where you live, they often list uh, volunteer roles that they have available because they will manage animal shelters. That's another big sector for volunteers. Uh, they'll manage recreation facilities or they'll, have, they'll actually have their own committees and boards that you can volunteer for. So a, a city might put out a call for people who are interested in um, heritage homes. They want you on the committee for that issue. So look to them for some resources. And you can always uh, email me if I don't know the answer. I will try to help you find it. That's my email. You're all welcome to email me at any time. And that is all I have today. So thank you for listening. I'm just going to look to the Q&A. I'm looking for, okay, so we have a question. I'm looking for some volunteer opportunities with audiobooks. Would you have any resources on how I can get started? So can you email me at the email I put in the chat? Uh, I don't know. I, that was 20 some years ago, but I will find out for you. But just remind me, okay, so that I can get that to you. And is there a website where we have a list of all the organizations looking for specific requirements? It would be nice if this could be shared. So all I can say about that is I don't know that there's a, a big list for everywhere. I would say though, um, again, the United Way and also, Volunteer Canada is the umbrella organization, but a lot of towns have their own volunteer whatever. So Volunteer Sudbury, where I used to volunteer, Volunteer Toronto, there might be a Volunteer Toronto. They have chapters um, under that umbrella agency, and they would have a list of, um, of agencies. And 411, I think it's 411. You can email me too, and I'll, I'll give this some more thought. My email's not showing. Okay, but 411 is a non-emergency line. So you know how 911 is an emergency. 411 is information for things that aren't emergencies, but are, are issues that you have in the community. And they, they direct people to agencies that are out there. They usually have a website. I will give you my email. They usually have a website of locally 411 that lists all the agencies that can provide help to people. So that's a good place to start. Uh, looking for places to volunteer. It is DM, as in Deborah Matson, DM at YWCA Durham, D U R H A M dot org, O R G. That's my email. 
Yeah, so 411, United Way, municipalities, towns, volunteer wherever, volunteer whatever city you're in. Based on your experience, what are the chances of getting a permanent job in the same company where you volunteer? Based on my experience, that has not happened for me personally, but I anecdotally for sure know um, uh, of that happening for people. I don't know what the percentage is, but a perfect example is someone in, uh, where I'm working who's retiring after, I think, 28 years. She started as a volunteer. And that was a long time ago, but I can see it being perfectly doable. Are there any other questions? Yeah, and I think that question about the company where you volunteer, I think it, it might be more likely with the skills um, than the company, but I'm, I know what happens. Can I volunteer at a museum? Gosh, right now, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, can you email me? I'll find out about that. I don't see why not, because I would think they would have some programs where maybe you're helping in the in the back you know um whether it's like a renovation or a res restoration oh uh, we've had volunteers there's another thing if you're into organization organize organizing uh we have volunteers many times who come in and just help us organize an area so we'll have a, a large craft area and it's can be a mess after some time and we had a person come in and organize everything so i don't know if that's something you'd want to do at a museum but maybe they have something like that i am going to um please email me because i want to find out about that for you oh thank you very much thank you thanks for that nice compliment i just you know go for it that's all i have to say <laughs> after all that Thank you very much, everybody. I think that's all I have for today.